Hi, Nate Ryan here hanging out with Dale Jarrett and Steve Letart. NASCAR heads back to Atlanta Motor Speedway this weekend. Atlanta completely changed last year, essentially into a drafting track with a repave, a reconfiguration. But this year it changes even a little bit more, Stevie, because they're going to have some very important changes to pit entry, as we're seeing here from the Anthony Alfredo tweet. Uh, they've changed everything in terms of how drivers are going to get in the pits. Yeah, so now to come on the pit road, the commitment line is on the end of the backstretch. Absolutely required. Like, look at the pack racing in Atlanta. It's very narrow. I mean, look too wide. There is some three wide, but not enough room. So now you're going to have to pit right here off the end of the backstretch. Why? Because as this video continues, you're going to see to get onto the old pit road, you would have to get out of the gas somewhere in the middle of one or two. Like right now, look at that white car, the 47 Stenhouse. If he gets out of the gas to come to pit road, where is everyone expected to go? It's so narrow, not as wide as Daytona or Talladega. So a very vital change, a very needed change. I will say, I think the drivers under green, if we see green flag pit stops, will do just fine. Um, now, there is no practice to practice it, but they will get a look at it during qualifying. NASCAR has said they're also going to have pit road speeds turned on for that big, long apron section of three and four to try to control your speeding penalty. But DJ, this is going to seem silly, but you've done it and I've done it. I actually think this is a bigger issue during cautions. You, the caution comes out, you take a break, you take, you take a breath, you loosen your belt, you start talking to your crew chief, the crew chief starts talking to you. I think we're going to see some big names just simply pass the entrance to pit road, not thinking, thinking about the old Atlanta and the way it went. So this is something I would be bringing up in my Sunday morning meeting to my race team, my spotter, my driver, and something I continue to bring up over the course of the day. Yeah, Steve, that's a great point. I hadn't really given that much thought as to just how quickly that comes up on a mile and a half racetrack. Uh, you just think the caution comes out. Yeah, you get slowed down. Uh, but as you pointed out, it's kind of a break. You don't get many of those um, uh, during the, the, a race like this, and especially now that the race has been uh, shortened a little bit. So you want to take that time to just kind of clear your mind, relax for a minute. Uh, but they're, the crew chief and the spotters are going to have to stay on these drivers because that's the last thing that you want with track position being so important. But it's something that definitely needed to be done. Very fortunate that there wasn't a situation last year to where uh, they had to make a green flag pit stop uh, other than if someone had an issue, just one car. But but um, it wasn't a situation where the whole pack was coming in because that would have been impossible to do. So uh, this is a, a move that needed to be made. Uh, very interesting, to, interesting to see how this track is going to race. As you pointed out, they, there's, you know, you've got a year on the, the racetrack on the surface. Um, we're going to have other races there before uh, on Saturday. And then you throw in a, a new tire combination. Um, you know, I know that these drivers are used to, to kind of throwing caution to the wind and just taking whatever they've got at first. But this is a high speed track uh, in a pack that, that makes a big difference in that. So the, the first part of this race uh, is going to be uh, eye opening for these drivers and these teams to see exactly what they can and can't do. And Steve, to your point about how this actually can be more difficult under yellow, uh, with this new Atlanta as a drafting track, we see a lot of cautions here. So we don't see pit stops under green really since 2022. And maybe that changes to DJ's point a little bit as the pavement starts to age. I don't know how much it will change in year two, but how will maybe that be a factor uh, in how this race will unfold? Well, what I will say is I believe that Atlanta has become the most mentally challenging tracks for the drivers. It used to be Bristol. You know, Bristol was always described as fighter jets in a soup bowl. Well, now I'm going to tell you uh, from watching the race at Atlanta last year and watching many races at Bristol, they look 10 times faster at Atlanta than they ever were at Bristol. The speed in which they carry. Now, the top speeds in Atlanta used to be higher, but then they would lift off the gas, turn down in the corner, slow down to a reasonably, I won't say cautious, but at least a controllable pace, get in the gas and drive up out of the corner. Now, middle of the corner speeds, my eyes, it, it took me 15 or, or 20 laps of the race to really dial into what I was watching. So I think this is mentally exhausting for the drivers, mentally exhausting for the spotters. Now th throw another new thing in to a track that we've now been to for the third time. Um, we're going to see who, how it plays out, but I think it could affect decision-making at the end of the race. All right, it's just as tough to pick a winner here now as is the Daytona or Talladega, but that's how we're going to wrap up. Uh, I'll start with my prediction. I'm going to go with Corey LaJoy, who nearly won this race uh, the last time NASCAR was Atlanta. I'm going to stick with the underdog story, the Chevrolet story, five for five. 
Uh, let's get both of your predictions, starting with you, Stevie. Well, listen, Atlanta's going to be a bar fight. What do you take to a bar fight? You take a bulldog. And the biggest bulldog I know in the field is Ross Chastain. Back-to-back -back seconds for a reason. And I think Ross Chastain could really care less what everyone thinks, could care less how many friends he has, and could care less if he wrecks. And I think that aggression is what it's going to take. He could just as easily end up on a rollback. But if all four good years are pointing straight, I think Ross Chastain has a pretty good chance. Well, I really don't have anything to add. We can cut this short because that's exactly my pick uh, for those reasons that you mentioned right there. there. There's no one better suited for this unless – now, I'm going – Ross is my pick, but I'm going to throw in his teammate, Daniel Suarez, could, is going to be a part of the mix. And, and is he willing and can he make the right decisions at the end of this to maybe steal this away from his teammate? But I think it's a big weekend for track house racing. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube channel.